Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Flat Cap Callum and this is the first of three parts of Cheltenham Festival Preview. Um, so this is focusing on the anti-post market and in specifically in keeping with the channel we're looking at the value in the anti-post market. So the way that this is broken down, three videos, part one, this is part one. Part one is the first two days, the non-handicap races. Part two will be the second two days, non-handicap races. Part three will be the handicap races. Uh, a little bit more explanation on that uh, kind of as we go through the video. So we are focusing on uh, day one and day two here. So Tuesday and the Wednesday um, for you. So these prices are accurate of February the 2nd. So it's February the 2nd right now. Uh, things will change, particularly when we get to Dublin Racing Festival at the weekend at Leperstown. Things will, will drastically change for some in the market. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the those races with a little bit of a, of a kind of overview, really, I guess, of those races. And then I'm going to conclude with three things. Three things I'm going to conclude with are best value each way. So if you were going to put a bet on now, this is what I would say the best value. The best of the big prices is point two and point three is value for the anti post market okay so for those of you who are not familiar anti post is the market that's available now once we get to post so i.e normally within the kind of 24 hours of the race if your horse doesn't run you get your money back when you're betting anti post if your horse doesn't turn up for cheltenham or runs in a different race which is often the case you do not get your money back it's counted as a loser so there's a much higher risk factor here what i also give as a, a kind of a, a, a bit of commentary here is chelton is very difficult to predict in terms of sometimes where horses particularly in the novice divisions novice hurdle divisions and novice chase divisions which races horses are actually going to turn up in because some of these horses are entered in two three even four different possible races um at the festival so part of the the challenge with anti-post picking is where is the horse actually going to run because you could bet it in three different races um so that's part of the challenge what we've got and we'll kind of talk through that so the ones i'm giving you is best value are the ones i think the, these are going to turn up in these races um and then anti-post there's a few options out there i think of some value where you've got a risk factor there of that horse it's probably their second preference on paper but i think there's huge value potential in the price hopefully that makes sense to you okay so talking through race number one supreme novice um this is a fairly straightforward race there's three horses uh, heading the market here in uh, dynamo dice constitution hill and john bond to me they're the right three favorite uh, in the race last year you had nods on uh, favorite and it you know, there wasn't very many runners this year i think you probably have a few more than that. I think eight runners in the supreme last year normally you've got a lot more than that um so the value, where, where's the value in the rest of the market? Well, at the moment, paying three places, it's not a bet I would take anywhere. So I wouldn't go against the first three to try and find the value. If you get nearer the time and they are paying more places, the three that I would have in your notebook might be my mate Mozzie, currently 20 to 1. So not a bet I'd take now, but one one if they were paying more places. Uh, first street is one to keep an eye on um, i've already anti-post uh, mentioned that around betfair hurdle um, currently you can get it 33s in places um, it's one i'm keeping nine i won't i won't be betting it now for the supreme um, but if we pay more places and it does well in the betfair hurdle it might be worth looking at and the last one uh, on my on my possible list is largely debut so at the moment massive massive price on paddy power you can get this at 66 to one so the first time um, it ran over hurdles, it absolutely smashed Kill Croup, uh, smashed it, um, looked like a great thing. And the next time it ran, it burst a blood vessel. Hasn't been seen since. It's not entered into anything else before Cheltenham. So there's a huge risk factor there. If it turns up in the Supreme, I would put that at single figure odds. So most bookmakers around, you can tend to get 25s, 33s, Paddy Power 66 to 1. That is one that I think is possibly worth risking. Well, no, I think it is worth risking at 66s now. Um, you may well lose your bet, but uh, and I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't put anything complicated combos, but it's it's a decent bet at that price. Okay, moving on. Arkle. Uh, I would make Edward Stone the favourite. Um, it's second favourite currently, three to one most places. 
I think that's a good a good single bet. Um, it's probably not one I'd put money on uh, right the second, but I think it, I would make that the favourite on form. And then second uh, horse I've got in that one to talk about is Saint Sam. I really like Saint Sam. I think because it's one of many Mullins as horses, it's slightly overlooked in the market. It's due to run at Leopardstown this weekend. 10 to 1, I think it's a good solid price each way and it will be one that you'll, we'll, we'll talk about a bit later. Okay, Champion Hurdle. <clears throat> You're not really going to go much further past Honeysuckle. It looks like a sure thing as long as it gets round. So you're really looking at what, what might come second or third or what might get lucky if Honeysuckle has a mishap. And the most solid bet for me is Sharjah. Um, 8 to 1 you can get at the moment. Um, it does. It, you know, it's, it's a bet I would probably take now at 8 to 1. Um because, <clears throat> excuse me, if Honeysuckle doesn't turn up, um, it, it, that horse would get slashed in odds. Or if, if something happened to Honeysuckle, I think that's the best horse to win. So Sharjah 8s is a good price. If you want to look further down the market, Tommy's Oscar, currently 2025s, you can get that. And, and if they were paying more places, I'd be a bit more interested. Um, it's come up out of the handicap ranks and has done an amazingly this year. The one that I would put on my list for uh, if they were paying more places near the time is Song for Someone. Get about 50s at the moment. Paying three places, I wouldn't take the bet. But if you got near and the field looks big and they're paying four or five places, a song for someone at 50s, I think is something that could run on into a place. Okay, Mayor's Hurdle. Uh, Tell Me Something Girl is the one that I would most go for in this. You'd probably get about seven to two now. Um, of the sort of, you know, away from odds on prices, that and Edward Stone are probably the, the best two I like at the moment in the first couple of days um, for a price as a single bet certainly um you've got stormy island i think that's guaranteed looking like it's going to run in the mayor's hurdle six to one thirteen to two i think is a pretty good price it's a bit short for me for each ways um it's a value for a, for a win bet um so it's, it's it's a tricky race to call because then if you look further down the market there's some other good ones and one i will talk about now is indefatigable if we're going to say that 20 to 1 you can get on sky bet now i think that, that horse looks to me like a decent price at that it runs well at cheltenham it is also entered in the stayers i think it'll probably go and run in the mares and at 20 to 1 paying three places it's it's worth a nibble to me so so that's one i will talk about and, and put in later on then we'll move on to the national hunt chase to conclude day one's non-handicap races um here it's really tricky novice chases there's there's four novice chase races at Cheltenham so trying to work out who's going to go where is very difficult um Fury Road and three under three five both entered in this race they have shorter prices for the brown advisory on the following day um but at the moment Fury Road 14s three under five twelves they're really good prices for that race um I'm not sure that it's worth risking it right now, but but certainly if they actually turn up on that that race and not the Brown Advisory, they'll be a lot shorter than that. Um, so, but it's a tricky race to call at this point. Where I would probably have a little bit of a a little bit of a flutter possibly is a, a big big prize, Annual Invictus. Um, it's entered in two or three different races at Cheltenham. The National Hunt Chase is the one you know it's the normally the less competitive race. It's running over a much longer distance. Um, this horse has not gone even to three miles yet, let alone three and a half. But the way it's been running, it looks to me like it stays. And it's a small yard, Chris Gordon, and I think it's overlooked. So 66s, I, I think whether it turns up for that race or wherever else it turns up, I think it's worth following in the market because I think it will be a big price um, and has got each way potential. OK, day two, uh, Ballybor Novice. Now, this is a really, really tricky race because... Uh, there's a lot of horses here, again, debatable whether they're going to go and turn up here or in the Albert Bartlett. And Gordon Elliott holds the key, a bit like he does in the National Hunt Chase, to be honest. So the question is, which of Gordon Elliott's horses are going to run here and which of them are going to run at the Albert Bartlett? And I would say right now, if you wanted to have a, a punt at the anti-post market, Jinto, which you can get 9-1 to one on Skybet, which I think is an absolute steal for it to turn up. Because if it does turn up, I would make that more like a three to one horse for this race. So I think nine to one on Gin, Gin, Ginto, Ginto, well, whatever we're going to call it, I think is a really, really good price anti post. The one that I think is most solid each way is Hillcrest. 14 to one is a nice price, um, and that will be in my selections a bit later on. And then another one that's um, 
an anti-post one because it's not his preference. It's favourite for the for the mayor's novice hurdle is um, Algari Devasi. You can get forty to one at the moment in some places for the Ballymore novice. If it turns up, it will be a lot, lot shorter than that. I mean, I think it's most likely to run in the in the mayor's novice, but forty to one, it could be worth just having a little punt on that. Then we've got the Brown Advisory. Uh, this is a really interesting race because there's there's some short price horses at the top of the market. The one, but the one I'm looking at here is from Anti Post is Bob Ollinger. Now, Sky Bet are paying non runner no bet on on this race. Most bookmakers aren't yet. Some else are. But Skybet are offering you the non-runner no bet or anti-post. Anti-post market Bob Ollinger for the Brown Advisory is 16 to 1. They're putting it in the non-runner no bet market, even money. Because it's not. It's looking like it might go to the Turner Novice Chase. If I was owning that horse, I would put it in the Brown Advisory every day. That is the best race for me for Bob Ollinger. And I can't walk past 16 to 1 on Skybet for this. Now, it, it looks like the, the signs are saying it's going to turn up at the novice chase, um, at the, the Turners, but 16 to 1 on the Brown Advisory is, is really good value. The other one in a similar situation is uh, Leon Presse, which is it looks like second preference. And I think you can get 33s paddy power I've seen on this in the anti-post market. Again, wouldn't want to walk past that. Um, and then finishing off, we've got the champion chase. Um Shishkin looks like it's going to win. Use your name looks like it's going to come second. So then it's you're playing for who's going to come third. And there's a, there's there's a few too many choices in there. I think the solid horses who've got Cheltenham form, Nube Negra, put the kettle on, Prolitolog are all are all worth a look. But but it could be any one of those three. And so I wouldn't want to split your bet on that one. So I think if they were paying more paces near the time than Champion Chase, probably put the kettle on and Prolitolog are where you're going to find the value. Um, and then the last two races, uh, I'm not really going to give any commentary. So the cross country and the champion bumper, I think, are far too open um, to talk about right now. And I'm not seeing the value. So conclusions then of, of what I'm thinking. Best value each way. This is what I've got on best value each way. So in the Arkle, St. Sam, 10s, 12 to 1, I think now, Sky Bet. Champion Hurdle, Sharjah, 8 to 1. Ballymore, Hillcrest, 14s. Mayor's Hurdle, Indefatigable, 20 to 1. If I was having now an each way, lucky 15, anti post on the first two days of Cheltenham, non handicap specifically, that's the four I'd go with. So that's that's what I'm going to give you as a conclusion there. Best of the big prices, as I talked about, um, these aren't all certain to run. Um, and, you know, more possibly more interesting when they're paying more places. But Supreme Novice, specifically Paddy Power, largely debut 66 to 1 champion hurdle song for someone 50s and the national hunt chase annual invictus 66s and then the last element value for anti-post so most of these are sky bet there's two that i've put here as paddy power um so anti-post so not the non-runner no bet at the moment but anti-post fury road and three under three five the national hunt chase 12s and 14s in the ballymore jinto nine to one and then Algari Devasi at 40s through Paddy Power. And then the Brown Advisory, Bob Ollinger, 16 to 1. It's definitely worth the bet. If it turns up there, you, you'll be laughing. But it's looking like it's not going to. Um, and then Laon Presse, 33s at Paddy Power. That is my conclusion. So thank you uh, for those of you who have watched. And hope you've enjoyed um, what I've got to offer. Clearly, these prices are accurate of the time I've made the video. If... In a week's time, the market looked very different and I might make different choices. I'm focusing here on value. I'm not telling you who's going to win. I don't know who's going to win. I'm looking at where I think the value is. Um, so join me for part two, which will be the second two uh, days of Cheltenham, non-handicaps, and then part three, the handicaps of Cheltenham. Thanks very much. Cheerio for now.